The first third of the 2018-19 NBA regular season is in the books and a number of the league's newcomers have already shown why they were thought so highly out coming out of college or their professional career overseas. With that being the case, Colin Ward-Henninger of CBS Sports has released the latest edition of his weekly NBA Rookie Power Rankings and there was plenty of competition for the spot at the top of his list as there have been plenty of impressive performances from the 2018 rookie class over the course of the first 30-some-odd games of regular season play. As you can see from the article below, the top pick from this past June's NBA draft is among the top rookies in their initial rankings but he is not the one holding down the top spot which should lead to plenty of conversation as the season moves forward and we see more and more of these rookies in action. Do you agree with CBS Sports' initial batch of rankings? Share your thoughts on who the top rookies are to this point in the season in the comments section below. Last week, Unranked Stats this week, 12.3 points, 2.5 assists, 1.3 steals last year's National College Player of the Year at Villanova, Brunson was pressed into action this week due to an injury to Dennis Smith Jr. As a three-year college player and two-time national champion, Brunson's poise and maturity were evident from the get-go as he fit seamlessly into the Mavs' starting lineup. He displayed an ability to get into the lane, and finished at high clip with both hands, leading to a stellar 61% from the field this week. Last week, 10 stats this week, 13.5 points, 2.5 assists, 1.5 steals, 1.0 blocks We'll give you one guess at which player led all rookies in minutes per game this week. That's right, Kevin Herter. The 6'7 shooting guard continues to impress as a mainstay in the Hawks lineup, averaging 36 minutes in two games this week. He exploded for a career-high 19 points on 4 of 6 three-point shooting in a loss to the Mavericks on Wednesday, and he's now collected a blocked shot in each of his last four games. Believe it or not at this young stage of his career, Herter has already become one of the more reliable members of the Hawks. Last week, 1 stats this week, 8.5 points, 4.3 rebounds, 1.3 steals Jackson came back down to earth this week after taking the top spot from Doncic last week. His 3.0 rebound performance in just 15 minutes in a win over Anthony Davis and the Pelicans brought down his averages this week, but otherwise he was a solid contributor. The Grizzlies have enough veteran talent that they don't need to play Jackson 30 minutes per game no matter what, and the rookie found that out this week. He had a strong game against the Blazers on Wednesday with 14 points, 6 rebounds and 2 blocks, but it's probably going to be a while before the 19-year-old achieves consistency. Last week, 7 stats this week, 11.0 points, 2.8 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 1.0 steals The Clippers have fallen on hard times recently, going 1-3 this week, but Gilgis Alexander has continued his strong play. He's already established himself as a master of the mid-range, using his pull-up ability to excel in the pick and roll, but he's also been able to consistently knock down catch and shoot three-pointers. He also excels on the defensive end, where the Clippers had been strong all season until their recent skid. The Clippers may regress to the mean over the next couple of weeks, but Gilgis Alexander already looks like a building block for years to come. Last week, Unranked stats this week, 13.5 points, 3.8 rebounds, 1.3 assists Bagley rejoined the Kings lineup after a back injury sidelined him for two games last week, and he didn't miss a beat. He only played 10 minutes against the Pacers due to foul trouble, but other than that he was solid in his reserve role in a 3-1 week for the Kings. Bagley's rebounding numbers have been wildly inconsistent throughout his rookie season, and that continued this week. He collected 5 total boards in the first 3 games this week, then pulled down 10 in 26 minutes in a win over the Timberwolves. 
Sacramento would probably like to see him get a little more consistent in that aspect of his game, but overall they have to be pleased with the way Bagley is fitting in. Last week, 8 stats this week, 16.5 points, 7.0 assists, 1.0 steals as Young finally out of his slump? That remains to be seen, but he did finally have a good game. After struggling in an upset win over the Nuggets on Saturday, Young broke out for 24 points on 11 of 20 shooting and dished out 10 assists in a close loss to Doncic's Mavericks. Young and Doncic will, of course, be linked throughout their careers because of the draft day trade, so that may have provided some extra motivation for Young to step up. He's still not shooting efficiently from beyond the arc, but he did see some go into the basket this week, 3 of 8. He's got a tough task carrying so much of the load for a terrible team, so it won't be surprising to see him go through some lulls throughout the season. Last week, 6 stats this week, 13.8 points, 9.8 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 1.8 blocks Aiden seems to be out of whatever strange situation caused him to be benched last week against the Trail Blazers, and he got back to his steady production for most of the week. He notched double-doubles in every game except Thursday's win over the Mavericks, which ironically was one of the worst offensive games of his career, 7 points, 5 rebounds, 3 of 13 from the field. The good news is, Aiton is back to blocking shots. Maybe the benching lit a fire underneath him defensively, but Aiton blocked 7 shots in 4 games this week, after blocking just 2 in the previous 4-game stretch. He's not the best defender yet, but as long as he can protect the rim he can at least be of service to the struggling Suns defense. Last week, 4 stats this week, 17.3 points, 8.7 rebounds, 0.7 blocks the Knicks went 0-3 this week, no surprise, but Knox's development has been a silver lining amid the Zion Williamson sweepstakes. The 6-9 forward tied a career high with 26 points and set a new mark with 15 rebounds in Sunday's loss to the Hornets. He's still not shooting efficiently from the field, but he went 7 for 15 from behind the three-point line this week, and the Knicks will certainly take that. Knox has only played 22 games this season and is still increasing his workload, so there will be growing pains along the way, but it's a good sign that he's already been able to put up some big scoring games. Last week, 5 stats this week, 21.5 points, 3.0 assists, 2.8 rebounds If you throw out a 5 for 18 clunker against the Stout Bucks defense, Sexton shot the ball extremely well this week. More importantly, however, he attempted 14 three-pointers in three games, making a respectable 37.5% of them. The Cavs have wanted Sexton to shoot more threes, and his total in the last three games exceeds the number that he had taken in the previous seven games combined, so that's a positive sign. Last week, three stats this week, 16.3 points, 8.3 rebounds, 5.5 assists Doncic limped toward this week's finish line with a pedestrian 13-point performance in a loss to the desperate Phoenix Suns, but he did enough in the previous three games, all wins, to earn back the top spot in the rankings. He's been struggling shooting the ball recently, but he had the best sequence of his young NBA career on Saturday, going on a personal 11-0 run in the final three minutes to rip the Houston Rockets' heart out and pull out a victory.